Okay, so we're coming back after we've been talking about these various different traits that you could have and how you might be able to infer it by looking at parents, other litter mates, and the dog that you physically got as to what colors this dog might have. So now we're gonna talk about the A locus. So the A locus is a bit confusing because there are three, well, there's actually four different characteristics that you can have on the A locus. And those are AY, AT, A, and AW. You can have any combination of those in the A locus. You'll always have two letters, and it could be, or two genetics, and it could be any combination of those. I'm not gonna talk about this one, this is a wild gene, and we don't see this in Frenchies, I'm just not that familiar with it, but it, it makes for the, or sometimes it's called the wolf gene. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit different. I just don't know enough about it to be able to talk about this comfortably, but you can go look up your own stuff. We're just gonna take it off the board for right now, because it doesn't show up in Frenchies. All right, so what are the possibilities that you can have here? Well, you can have an AYAY dog. That will be a fawn dog. And if it's got other colors present, like chocolate and blue, then it will be a blue fawn or a chocolate fawn. If it's a pied, it'll be a fawn pied. Uh, if it's a merle, it'll be a fawn merle. So that's the AY gene. The AT gene, ATAT makes for tan points. So a dog that has tan points will be either ATAT -AT or it could be ATA. -A. Both of those together produce blank tan points. This tends to produce whiter points. And this one here makes more orangey points. Most of the time, more orangey points. And if you combine these with a copy of cream, the, the, the points need to stand up even more. And if you, kept, if you also have an intensity gene, it makes the points even brighter as well. But a dog that has tan points is gonna be pretty obvious because it's gonna have, <clears throat> unless it's a, an extreme pied, you can have extreme pied, this way it's complicated. If you have an extreme pied tan pointed dog where the area where the tan points would be is now white and it won't show up. But for the most part, a tan pointed dog would be pretty obvious because it'll have tan on its front paw, on its paws, on the bottom. It'll probably have some markings above its, uh, above its eyes. It'll have um, a tan point on its rump right where its tail is. So there'll be a, rump, a, a tan point area there. And uh, typically you'll see some tan points maybe on its cheeks as well. So there's two different ways to get tan points, ATAT -AT or ATA, they produce tan points. Um, a dog that is AYAT will be a sable. This is a dog that rather than being a straight form dog, is a dog that has kind of a bit of a, uh, tips of its hair as a black, and it makes for what we call sable. A dog that is AA, this is what's called recessive black. There's a number of ways to get black. This makes for a completely black dog. Brindle can make a black dog, we don't want that. But double A, recessive black, is absolutely fine. So it could be a double A dog. Um, Yes, so I think I've discussed that and what the possibilities are enough there. So let's talk about how you would know. Well, one other important thing here is on all of this stuff with the tan points, if you've got a dog that has got a copy of Brindle, the tan points will be completely muddled up and not show up very well, if at all. Typically a dog that would have nice bright tan points that was Brindle will have kind of a striation of colors, lighter colors on its forepaws and its, and its back legs. Probably won't have anything on its face at all. Versus a dog that didn't have the brindle will have bright tan points, tan points on its butt and above its eyes. So brindle really messes up tan points. So um, if you've got a dog, that, a puppy or a dog that you're gonna breed and you can see nice visible clear tan points, that dog is either ATAT or it is ATA, we know that, we know that. If that dog is a fawn dog, then if it's, so this is 10 points, and if it's a fawn dog, then it's gonna be AYAY, -A -Y. and if it's a sable dog, it'll be AYAT. 
So you can look at the dog and get a good idea of what's going on with the 10 points. You can also look at the parents. If you've got a parent that has got solid 10 points, if your dog doesn't have 10 points, but you have a parent that does have 10 points, then here's the possibilities. So we're going to assume that one of the parents had nothing to do with 10 points at all. It was A-Y-A-Y. And we're going to look at two possibilities. One is that the parent has two copies of AT, nice 10 points. Every single dog will be AT, AY, AT. No, we've got it this way, AT, AY. They will all be that. Every dog will have a copy of 10 points. And if they don't have Brimble, they're going to be Sables. So if you've got Sable puppies in the litter, or your dog is a Sable, there's a very good chance that your dog almost certainly has a copy of AT. The other way to get 10 points is ATA. A-T-A, and that produces A-Y-A, not 10 points, A-T-A-Y, not 10 points, um, A-Y-A. So these are sables, and these are not sables. So in the litter that doesn't have brindle, if half the dogs have if half the dogs are sables, you've probably got a dog that's ATA, and you've got a 50-50 chance that your puppy we're looking at is either a, uh, is either AT is either going to be ATA, excuse me, ATAY, or AAY. This is a sable, and this is not sable. So if you've got litter that's got sables in it, and your dog's not a sable. Your dog probably got the A gene, it's probably AYA. All right. So, based on this, without knowing a whole bunch, not having a specific DNA test on the puppy or the dog we're going to breed, we can do some back analysis. Look at the litter mates, look at the color of this puppy, look at the parents, and even go back and look at the pedigree the offspring, this first and second generation of parents that stood before this, that would be grandparents, great-grandparents, and really start to build up an image of what this dog might be and have an idea about what you're likely to get based on the DNA that that dog possesses. So the difficult part about all of this always is, is that the, the only things that express themselves with a single copy are Brindle and Pied. Everything else takes two copies, and if the dog doesn't have two copies, the gene could be there, but you just can't see it. And that dog, for instance, a dog that's big D, little D, put to a dog that is a blue dog, DD, will produce litter of half blues and half not blues, but you've got to know that D is present, and so you might be able to infer that based on litter mates, parents, or even great, great parents and great grandparents. Um, all right. What else did we talk about here? Let's see how we did on time on this. So we did 10 on the previous one. We've got a couple of minutes here. So there's a couple of other genes that I have not talked about here. Uh, that's the fluffy gene. So we'll talk about fluffy for a moment. Fluffy is there's um, either you're not a fluffy carrier. We normally write that as LL. Or if you're a fluffy carrier, you'd be L little L. Or if you're full fluffy, you'd be little L little L. And by the way, this L, typically it's either, it can be shown, there's actually a couple of different variations of the fluffy gene. L1, L4 are typical that you see. They are, I don't think there's any difference in terms of what these dogs will produce. You can put an L1 dog and an L4 dog together, get L1, L4s. They can look exactly the same as L4, L4s, L1, L1s. So people sometimes want to act like they are concerned about what version of Fluffy that your dog you're going to make to has, I don't think you have to worry about it. Certainly in my experience, that Fluffy dogs that I produced, that are L's and L4's versus LL's or L4, L4's, there's variation, but I can't tie it back to the fact that they're L1's or L4's. Okay, so what happens if you've got a Fluffy carrier dog? <clears throat> a dog that's that. What would it look like? It won't look like a fluffy because, again, it is a double recessive gene. You have to have two copies for it to be expressed. 
So the only way you can tell about this one is to go back to the parents. If you've got one parent that was a fluffy, LL, bred to a non-fluffy, LL, what would you get? Planet Square says, every dog will be a fluffy carrier. If you bred a fluffy carrier, up here, fluffy carrier, to a full fluffy, what would you get? You get half fluffy carriers, 50%. These ones here are half fluffy carriers, and 50% full fluffies. So, your dog doesn't look fluffy, but it had a fluffy parent. We know, without a doubt, that your dog has to carry the fluffy gene. Your dog came from a litter that had a fluffy in it. We know that both parents had to have at least a copy of fluffy, which ends up that your dog has a 75% chance that it carries the fluffy gene. It's not guaranteed. And without doing a DNA test or breeding that dog with a fluffy to find out, we wouldn't definitely know, but the chances are that your dog does in fact have the fluffy gene. So what else can we talk about here? We're just gonna look at the time again one time. We're 11 minutes into this. This is really the end of this one pretty much. So the other part about this is to look at the pedigree of the dogs you're breeding, because you can see some things that, for instance, if you have on the parents, one of the parents' side, you find that both parents are pieds. It gives you, so that, it, it, my own, let's not do that. No, I think I'm gonna confuse you. I think that's enough of this. There we go. All right, so, hey, I hope you enjoyed this. Bit rambly, but still, hopefully the point's across there. You can get a lot of information. Any dog that you look at, you can figure out a hell of a lot about what that dog's DNA is based on Number one, the colors of the parent, well, of course, the color of the dog itself, the color of its parents, and the color of offspring in the litter that your dog came from. And to a certain extent, the, the colors of offspring that those two parents have produced in the past is a little helpful too. But knowing specifically about that litter can tell you an awful lot about what may or may not be present. Well, there we go. Hey, thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.